welcome back to our channel. My name is Sarah Pullenby and I'm the Marketing Director here at Foot Health Battersea. So two days ago we celebrated International Women's Day, celebrating women of the past, present and future and the pioneering steps they have taken or are taking to secure a better future. And this year's theme was hashtag choose to challenge. And we wanted to write about the amazing women that have challenged the male dominated STEM world over the years to become pioneers in the medical industry. A lot of us have heard the names of these women, for example, Marie Curie and Florence Nightingale. But how much do we really know about what it was that brought them to the forefront of the medical industry? So Florence Nightingale was born in 1820 and wanted to become a nurse. Now, during these times, not only was nursing not the honourable profession that it is today, but it was so bad that her family actively discouraged her from pursuing the career. However, Florence Nightingale continued to pursue this profession. Her main prominence came through the Crimean War, where she was serving as a manager to the nurses that she had trained. Due to her professionalism and treatment of injured soldiers and her persona as the lady with the lamp, she changed the reputation of the entire profession. And still her memory lives on 111 years after her death, with her influence still inspiring people to take up the nursing profession now. One year after the birth of Florence Nightingale, another lady was born in 1821 that would also become a pioneer in the medical industry. Elizabeth Blackwell, originally born in England, broke down many barriers to become the first female doctor in the United States in 1849, having graduated from Geneva Medical College in New York. She continued to also become the first woman to be named on the General Medical Council's Medical Register in Britain 10 years after qualifying. Later, she also published the book Pioneer Work in Opening the Medical Profession to Women and along with other achievements opened the New York Infirmary for Women and Children along with her sister, Dr Emily Blackwell and Dr Marie Zukshevska. Elizabeth Blackwell lived to the age of 89 and passed away in 1910, the same year that Florence Nightingale died. In 1903, at the age of 35, Marie Curie became the first woman to win a Nobel Prize when her and her husband Pierre Curie discovered polonium and radium while looking at the relationship between radioactivity and heavy elements of the periodic table, leading to huge developments in the advancement of medicine. In 1906, after the death of her husband, Marie Curie continued with her work. In 1911, she became the first and only person so far to have won two Nobel Prizes in two scientific fields. During the First World War, Marie Curie's portable x-ray machines were used for field hospitals. Marie Curie died in 1934 at the age of 66. Born in 1918, Gertrude Ellion, an American biologist, won the Nobel Prize along with George Hitchings and Sir James Black for their discoveries of important principles for drug treatment. Gertrude Ellion is most well known for her contribution in the development of AZT, the first antiretroviral drug to treat AIDS, but also throughout her career invented drug treatments for leukaemia, gout, malaria, viral herpes and the prevention of kidney transplant rejection. Gertrude Ellion passed away in 1999 at the age of 81. Rosalind Yellow, born in 1921, was involved in the development of radioimmunoassays of peptide hormones. These allow measuring of hormones in the blood. Due to this research, Rosalind Yano received a Nobel Prize in 1977, along with Roger Gedelman and Andrew Scali. This not only made it possible to scan the blood for hormones, but also for HIV and AIDS, which has been crucial to ensuring blood transfusions are carried out safely. And on a personal note, no list of women in medicine would be complete for me without, the same we sound a little bit cheesy, mentioning my mum. Together with my grandfather, my dad and the rest of the incredible team that we have had and still do have here at Foot Health Battersea, we've been treating the feet of South West London for over 60 years. Not only was mum instrumental in the success of the practice and ensuring that our patients receive excellent care, but she has also taken her work to those who are in desperate need in other countries, working closely with facilities for patients with diabetes in the Mediterranean. My mum constantly inspires me to care for those around me, and whilst that doesn't mean I'll be picking up a scalpel anytime soon, I know that her determination to help those who need it has helped shape who I am today. Finally, in celebration of women everywhere who are mothers in the most simple sense of the term, or who are mother figures, or who perhaps are inspirational mother type role models, 
We wish you a wonderful Mother's Day from all of us here at Foothouse Battersea. And on that note, that's it from me today. Remember, if you have any podiatry or foot health related questions, you can send us a message on Facebook or email info at foothealthbattersea.co.uk. 